You're watching Sky News, the main stories this morning. Sky News has been told one in four terminally ill people will need expert end-of-life care, aren't getting it because of funding pressures. British travellers are facing long delays at airports as EU countries are criticised for not bringing in more staff to carry out new security measures. And Prince Philip will attend his final official engagement later this afternoon. Well, staying with that, um, he will be carrying out his last official engagement at three o'clock later today. Now, he's going to attend a parade at Buckingham Palace as his um, last official engagement. That is before he retires. Well, in the last 65 years, the Prince has undertaken more than 22,200 solo engagements. He's made 637 solo overseas visits to 143 different countries. And in that time, he has given almost five and a half thousand speeches. Well, with me now is the um, royal historian and photographer Ian Pelham um, Turner. Um, Ian, gosh, if anyone needs a bit of a break, he could Good easily morning, say yes. it would be um, Prince Philip. As he describes himself, the, the world's most famous plaque puller <laughs> um, is finally hanging up his crown today. Um, but the world's most famous taxi driver, London taxi driver, remains because his own favourite car that he wow. drives around in London is a London taxi. Oh, really? And he's been known in the past uh, that when he's been driving himself down the mall and someone has hailed him, he's pulled over and he's done this Dick Van Dyke, almost <laughs> Cockney accent, you know, asking him where they wanted to go in the past. So uh, he, he is, he's someone who's memorable uh, in my own life, obviously. Um, uh, I, I first met him. Uh, when I was, uh, I was asked, I was commissioned to do the first uh, carriage photographs of him, horse carriage photographs of him. How are you, sir? And uh, I was taken to Windsor Great Park and they said, what's going to happen now is Prince Philip's going to come through. Uh, you're going to get some great pictures of him, you know, splashing through the river. You know, it's going to look like black beauty. It's going to look fabulous. No problem at all. So there I am poised with my camera and, and he comes towards me and I'm thinking he's got to slow down in a minute you know, because I'm <laughs> right in his way. And, I, and he's, he's got this demonic look on his face like he's just about to run over me. And surely he did. He almost did run over. And, and the only way I could sort of get out of the way was to jump into this thorn bush. So to say I was bloodied on, on the first occasion <laughs> I worked with Prince Philip, it, it was something else. And I'm sure you came to know that actually he doesn't really like the media very much. And as, as a royal photographer, how you found out how it affected you then, but um, in terms of working with him, ongoing, moving forward, what was that like? How difficult was that dealing with him? I mean, modern day photographers, I, I was talking to my colleague, Helen Sharp, before I came on another royal photographer, they got it so easy nowadays. You know, in my day, it was film. I mean, the bleep machine was going uh, for sort of 60, to the dozen at times where, when, when you'd work with them. And, and there were lots of occasions where, I mean, I got, uh, I had to do uh, one occasion uh, during the Silver Jubilee and I was commissioned to do um, work with the Boy Scouts Association of Great Britain. They were cooking the longest sausage in the world for the Guinness Book of Records. The Queen had come to look at this sausage. Um, she was going up and down the rows of this sausage that was right across uh, Hyde Park. What I hadn't realised was, was that uh, the Duke of Edinburgh had come in behind me and I was cut off. Um, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't get out of, of this very narrow pathway that the Queen was coming up and down at a great rate of knots. And uh, as she sort of finally came down my path, the, the, thought, the only thing I could do was to actually kneel because I thought that just seemed appropriate at the time. She had a brolly with me that morning and I could hear the, the, the bleeping message of, of the Duke of Edinburgh behind me saying, what on earth is that bleep bleep photographer think he's bleep bleep doing with the Queen? Thanks for the bleeps, really appreciate that <laughs> this, this time <laughs> in the morning. Um, so when you say your day, so how, how, when did you start work with him? How long ago are we talking here? And, and what, what's he like over that time, over this period of time? Did you get to know him? You can, I mean, you, you never get to know them that well. I mean, the, 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 you, you get to know their idiosyncrasies yeah. more than anything. You know, you, you get to know their little foibles. So I first started really working with them in the 70s. Um, and and, and I, as I, I've really worked with five generations of the royal family. So you get used to it mm. after a while. You get used to sort of some of the things. Some of the things, uh, you know, I mean, one of the things that you learn in photography is, is you still have to be the conductor of the orchestra. You cannot allow any royal member to to actually overpower you too much at the same time. So there, there was a bit of thrust. 
to and fro going on at times with, with the, the Duke of Edinburgh. And you joked um, before that, that he jokes calling himself the world's most experienced plaque unveiler. Yeah. But in reality, he was so much more than that. He really put in a lot of work for the charities that he supported over He put in a lot of work for the charities. He, I, I, I used to work with political historians. And in the 1970s and 1980s, and, and even before that period, in the 1950s when he first started, it was regarded that the Duke of Edinburgh and Lord Goodman at that time were the two most powerful people in Britain, and they could actually determine a lot of what happened, mm. really, in, in the course of Britain's history at the same time. He had a lot of uh, um, you know, opportunities to actually guide Britain in the way that he wanted to, as, as he's done with the royal family. OK, well, apart from um, the prince trying to run you over um, with a carriage, and um, what do you think you're going to miss? What do you think people are going to miss? And, and you say those, he used to get, give those, those incredible gaffes, but were they gaffes? You kind of look at the prince, Prince Philip, and you think he's just, you know, a grumpy granddad. My dad would say half the stuff that he says, you know, it's just that the old man kind of talking. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I think um, probably the thing that we most unused from now on will be the bleep machine, uh, you know, and I think the, the reality is, um, you know, these days, um, you know, with the royal family, I, I think I, I cannot see him, if I'm honest, retiring. I, I retired mm. last year, I'm 66 now, I retired last year, it lasted four days, and I think he, you will see him back in the public ilk in some way. He just, he won't retire. Yeah, but he's got 30 years on you, he's 96, but let's see, let's wait and see, shall we? Um, Ian, always a pleasure talking to you, thanks so much, thank you. OK, well, let's um, go to um, central London now to hear the chief executive of Ryanair, Michael O'Leary. Now, he's speaking about how Brexit will affect the industry and then will let us know um, if he says anything about the airline queues. And um, let's see if we can actually talk about those queues that people have been experiencing travelling um, to Europe. And um, let's take a listen in. Thanks so much. Thank you. Now, the Duke of Edinburgh will carry out his final official engagement at Buckingham Palace later today. Now, he's known as much for his um, faux pas as his charitable work. But now, at the age of 96, he's decided to take things a little easier. Well, in the last um, 65 years, Prince Philip has undertaken more than 22,200 solo engagements. He's made 637 solo overseas visits to 143 different countries. And in that time, he's given almost 5,500 speeches. Our Royal Correspondent Rhiannon Mills reports. <laughs> With that trademark sense of humour, he's always done his bit, never afraid to make a joke of it all. Pay attention because I'm now going to see the world's most experienced plaque unveiling. <laughs> now, after 70 years of unveiling those plaques and a diary full of official engagements, Prince Philip has decided it's time to take a step back. At 96, I really do feel he deserves a rest. I don't think he's going to disappear completely. I'm sure he'll turn up for various jobs with the Queen here and there. But the nice thing is now that he can pick and choose them and uh, relax when he wants to. And uh, that's uh, that good for the nation, I think. His marriage in 1947 may have brought privileges, but it did mean sacrifices. Lieutenant Mountbatten returns to the Naval Training Centre at Corsham, where he's an instructor at the Petty Officers School. He had to give up his successful career in the Navy to become the Queen's full-time consort, a very masculine man always destined to be one step behind his wife. I think his greatest achievement has been to support the Queen through probably one of the most um, tempestuous periods that the monarchy has ever been through. And to, in a sense, to wear the trousers in the family so the Queen could wear the crown. How are you, sir? Are you well, sir? Well, do I look ill? <laughs> he was never a big fan of the attention, and Philip, in later life, has become better known for his gaffes. <laughs> but in his time, he has supported almost 800 different organisations and charities, carrying out 22,000 engagements. 
It's here that Prince Philip will carry out that final engagement supporting the Royal Marines. Buckingham Palace was actually a place that in the early days the Prince struggled to settle down, thinking that the Royal Court was all a bit stuffy. And that's why he'd go on to play such a key role in modernising the monarchy, trying to make it more in touch with the people and turning it into the institution that we know today. As his wife continues to take centre stage, he will still be in the background for support as younger members of the family step up. Prince Philip wouldn't want us to be sentimental about it all. That's never been his style. Rhiannon Mills, Sky News in central London. Now, Donald Trump has called the EU very, very protectionist and said its trade policies are unfair. Speaking to the Wall Street Journal, he claimed the bloc is stacked against the United States. Well, um, let's speak to our senior political correspondent, Jason Fowle, who's in Westminster for us um, this morning. And, um, Jason, what else has he been saying here? If he's so um, angry and upset about the...